former employees of fast food restaurants, what are some dirty secrets your chain or single restaurant didn't want your customers to know? McDonald's for 5 years. When you're trained they encourage you to look for golden moments, which are essentially targeting children and making them feel special. Chipotle's deep, dark secret, it's 50 stroke 50 lemon lime juice in the rice. Oh no, seriously, that place was above board all around. I watched them bring that huge jug of lemon lime out of the back while making a batch of rice and yelled out I know the secret and they all chuckled at me, then gave me double meat without charging me. 3 Chipotle. I worked at a Tim Hortons all through high school and a bit of university. The always fresh stuff is kind of bull crap. Everything is frozen, and ray heated when they need to be served. The donuts, the eggs and the breakfast sandwich, and any baked good was all frozen, put in the oven and then served. My location, however, was strict about the 20 minute rule on our pots of coffee. I worked as the baker at my location for a while and this was exactly the case, except muffins and cookies were frozen batter. Eating the frozen cookie dough was delicious though. I used to work at Subway. My manager at the time was really conscious of food costs, to a fault. Most commonly was changing the expiration dates of food so it wouldn't have to be thrown out. This may not be a huge deal for a couple days, but food would last a couple weeks. He would also take lettuce in a pan and put it back into the bag. Finally, he kept frozen, unbaked, bread for over a year. It was so old that the yeast had died, causing the bread to not rise. He was fired after I got fed up and blew the whistle to the franchise owner. Papa John's driver here. A cheese pizza dipped in garlic sauce is the same exact thing as a cheese stick dipped in marinara sauce, only it costs about twice as much. If you get cheese pizzas, and dip them in the garlic sauce. Just start asking for cheese sticks with two pizza sauces. You'll save yourself some money. Papa John here. You're no longer my son. I know that at Pizza Hut Express, they throw out unpurchased pizzas every 20 minutes. Since I thought this was such a food waste, I would stockpile them on days my manager wasn't working and take them home. Heck, I'll eat pizza that's been sitting out for days. Our buddy in college worked at a Papa Murphy's. Pizzas that never got picked up went home with him. It took him weeks to figure out we were calling them in. Former McDo's, McDonald's, employee checking in. Like it's been said, not much went on in the way of shady hygiene practices that I saw. Managers were always on our asses to keep the place clean. If you've got time to lean, you've got time to clean this basically meant we weren't allowed to sit or lean during our shifts. Though I took ample opportunities to lean on the counter, which served two purposes. It made me appear genuinely interested in customer 3249, and it allowed my feet a much needed respite. Our location was on a highway in one of those rest areas, and so there was a few businesses under one roof. One of these was a donut place, and people would often turn their noses up at McDonald's coffee and order their food there, only to go right over to the donut place and get coffee. The kicker, we owned and operated both places. They were literally connected in the back, and we shared employees, and more importantly, coffee, TL, DR. People often waited in two lines to get a coffee they insisted was better when it was actually exactly the same. I didn't work here, but it was national news. The Taco Bell down the street from me was closed for a few days and everyone was fired because the late shift pooped in the beans. I worked at a pizza place. One time during an inspection they found our tub of flour had been rolled into the bathroom. The inspector asked me why it was in there. I said well we didn't have a place to put it right now, still got an A rating. I guess it depends on the state or individual inspector or something. We got written up for having boxes on the floor in the kitchen, the mops being upside down, and not having dishwater run. In 2008 I had a job at a food avenue in Target. One day my dad went into the hospital, and since I wasn't allowed to take calls while at work, I spent the day not knowing what was going on. I sobbed into your pizzas. I sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. All over those pizzas. So, if you had an extra salty pizza from a Target in South Florida in 2008, it was because you were eating my tears. MMMM sorrow. I work at BK the King. 
The grossest thing I've ever seen happen in my store is something a customer did. Midway through this lady's meal she decides her baby's diaper is full. So she changes it. On the freaking table. Right next to her food. And as the baby is lying in ketchup she proceeds to shove french fries down her grotesque gullet. I'm sure this was specific to my own location, but at Subway we were told to put new expiration stickers on top of the old ones when food was about to go bad so we wouldn't get written up by the health inspector. I work for Subway Corporate, shoot me the address of that Subway and I'll report it. This is unacceptable. Worked at Burger King in the 1990s. Aside from the half the crew being permanently stoned, there were no real shenanigans. We wouldn't serve anything that hit the ground, made most things to order, threw out old and stale crap, heck, we even threw out the frozen meat we played frisbee with. 99% of fast food restaurants, despite the reputation. I worked at the regional sandwich shop chain Jimmy John's for 4 years during high school. Although there weren't any secrets, a set, plenty of disturbing things happened that made me question ever eating there again. 1. I grab a head of lettuce to start slicing it. I'm not sure why, but some instinct told me break it in half just to make sure the inside was okay. So I cut the head in half, and to my horror, see a swarming mass of hundreds of tiny black bugs eating living on the inside of the lettuce head. Turns out the entire shipment of lettuce is like this. We had been serving it to people for days. 2. Another lettuce story. A woman orders a sandwich then sits down to eat. Normal enough. After a few minutes, she comes back to the register, a look of horror on her face. She turns to the customer who I'm currently taking an order from and says to him, you should step away, you may not want to see this. With the other customer gone, the woman opens her hand and in her palm are small shards of glass. They were in her sandwich. We examine the lettuce, and sure enough it is riddled with glass. Luckily it was a relatively new batch so we had only been serving it for a few hours. As for how it got in there, we had no idea. Our best guess is someone from the previous shift had broken a light bulb or something over the food and had failed to tell anyone. 3. My first manager loved to throw up knives and catch them in crazy ways. So one day he comes in right after we had sharpened the bread knives, and anyone who has worked at Jimmy John's knows that the knives are sharp as heck already. So he decides to do this overly ambitious trick where throws two knives, spinning end over end, behind his back and catches them with the opposite hands. Well, the knives went into the air just fine, bit on the way down ended up deeply gashing both his exposed wrists and nearly cutting off his thumb, which luckily hung on by a thread. Literally, there was a lot of blood that day. 4. I had a manager with a terrible whooping cough. You know the kind of cough that just sounds wet, disgusting, full of phlegm. Anyway, he would hack right into his hands, then proceed to handle the food. He didn't work there very long. Those are just off the top of my head. I'm sure there's more but I'm drawing a blank right now. At the Jimmy John's I worked at they purposely fart in the food they send out for delivery. It's sort of a running joke. The managers were all in on it. Where I used to live, there is a smaller town about 10 miles out with a bar restaurant famous for its broasted chicken. People drive from miles around to eat there. I grew up eating there on occasion with family. In high school, I decided to get a job there. Quite often, I would catch employees, who have been there for years, dropping chicken from the broaster onto the filthy floor they never cleaned, then sticking it onto a customer's plate. One morning, a veteran employee was showing me how to mix up the batch of coleslaw that gets plopped onto every plate of famous chicken. Using her bare hands, she mushed and squished away, then suddenly had to sneeze. She turned her head away from the bowl, blew saliva blobs all over the walk-in cooler door, wiped her nose and mouth with the back of her hand, then plunged those babies back into the coleslaw. I quit. I refuse to eat there anymore. It's still very popular to the locals. Where I used to live, there is a smaller town about 10 miles out with a bar restaurant famous for its broasted chicken. Come to Broasted. Where we assure you that your chicken will be roasted by only the Dow cheese brass to lock in that special sauce. McDonald's. The veggie patties are always in contact with meat products. They get cooked on the same grill as the patties and no one cleans the area of beef fat beforehand. Red Robin. Check your burgers to ensure they're cooked. 
Chicken and beef patties are taken off the grill before they're finished. The hot juices inside will continue to cook the meat but this is borderline during busy hours. It's not uncommon to see burgers get sent back to the kitchen uncooked. Last time I checked out a local MCD's kitchen here they had a separate, smaller grill being used just for veggie burgers. That's the day I learned they served veggie burgers. Delivered for Jimmy John's for a while. That place is meticulously clean. We don't make the dough, but everything else is prepared in shop. We slice all of the meats and cut all the veggies ourselves. Everything is pretty fresh. That said, it was still your typical thankless food service job. Apparently someone who lives 10 minutes away doesn't understand how crazy it is for them to be standing there with a sack of sandwiches 15 minutes later. One dollar tip for you. Frick you, I'm breaking your cookie next time. Combo I'm breaking your cookie next time, you, sir, are much more well adjusted than the poster above who mentioned wiping off a toilet with a known non-tipper's food. I'm glad not everyone working in food service are sociopaths. It's been nearly 15 years now, but I worked at McDonald's. In general it was not terrible, with one exception. Shakes? Shakes have their own machine, separate from ice cream. Or at least they did. I understand the Mickey thing may have changed shakes around. At that time though, the ice cream was low fat, but the shakes weren't. They had their own mix. The same mix was used by all the shakes, and then a syrup was added by the machine. Four flavors. Vanilla, choc, strawberry and the seasonal flavor. For example, shamrock. But when I was working, it was mango, and it lasted forever because it didn't sell. You open up the bottom back of the machine and you basically put in this big open metal container, like a big bucket, basically, and stick a tube in it. Now, the front of the machine with the spout and stuff does get cleaned each night, but most of the innards of the machine were never touched. They were completely infested with cockroaches in the inner workings. When you'd open the back to refill the bucket, it'd be all skitter 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 while the cockroaches would run and hide. The idea of this big roach swimming pool of shake mix permanently put me off McDonald's shakes, or any fast food shakes whatsoever. The shake mix would sit in there all day, from opening, because people did actually order shakes at breakfast. So it'd sit in there all day with the roaches from about 5am to 1am or so, then stored in the fridge, and pulled back out. The rotation was terrible too. You'd usually just dump more stuff in on top because otherwise people would be terribly because the shake machine was down while it was cleaned or coming to temp. For whatever reason, lower temp, different works, dunno. We never had this problem with the ice cream machine which was like 3 feet away. Just the shake machine. Some of the employees figured out how to rig the shake machine to dispense just syrup, so they could make vanilla cokes and stuff. The syrups weren't in open buckets or anything. I think plastic packs never replaced them so it was probably okay but I didn't partake. Oh, and our ice cream machine broke. The night manager decreed it, right after July fireworks so that we didn't have to do about 1000 cars getting nothing but ice cream cones. Instead we hung out on the roof. If you get the baked fish at Captain D's it's actually just a fillet of whiting fish, a little butter and seasoned salt, microwaved for a couple of minutes and thrown on a bed of rice. This knowledge was actually very useful in college when all I had access to while the dining hall was closed was a microwave. Oh and in spite of the crappy food the Captain D's I worked at was immaculately clean. Not really a fast food restaurant, but if you're ever at AMC theaters and you want free popcorn, Ask for a cardboard tray filled with it. The trays are free, and there is no limit to how many we can give you. And if you want free soda, same thing goes. Ask for a courtesy cup, or multiple courtesy cups, filled with your drink of choice. They are also free and there's no limit on how many we are allowed to give you. Also, don't order hot dogs or pizza AMC. Just don't. Trust me. Domino's. If you are a customer placing an order over the phone, and taking a particularly long time to do so, the employee you are talking to is secretly plotting your demise. Oh god now I'll be paranoid to order as fast as possible. Auntie and secret pretzel dipping solution is water and arm and hammer baking soda. I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement that said I would not divulge that secret ingredient for 2 years after my employment had ended. Also 2, 4, 8 refrigerate 
That is their recipe for lemonade. Two butter sized tubs of fresh squeezed lemons. Yes we actually squeeze them in the bag. 4 cups of sugar and fill the rest of the 8 quart container with water. Stir. Then throw it in the fridge until it is cold. By butter tubs I mean about a 1 pound tub sized container. I work at a Zaxby's. Southeast USA chicken franchise. And if something fried hits the floor. We pick it back up and throw it back into the fryer. And then use it. Some guy did shove a piece of toast down his pants. But the only reason he did it was the guy in the drive through beat his ex-girlfriend. Who was now his girlfriend. I recall him later on in the day saying. Dude my pubes are still freaking buttery. Worked at a gas station called Quick Trip in high school. Best crap job ever. Food times were adhered to. Fresh food brought in every morning. Cleaned the bathrooms every 30 minutes. Mopped the entire store every 30 minutes and faced the store and cleaned all the glass hourly. Also, had to take a two week academy to learn all kinds of crap. To include making change on the spot from any denomination without a computer doing the work. I skill I still retain today. I loathe people who are slow at making change. And old people in line in front of me who use these fabled things known as checks. I freaking love quick trip. Get my gas there all the time. I work at Colston and we are terrible about everything. I assume it is just my location and because I have an awful manager though. If our cakes expire, my manager makes us change the dates so we don't have to throw them out. I always wear gloves and am good with food but my manager and some employees never wear gloves and touch cakes mix-ins with their bare hands. And my manager has some dumb girlfriend who comes in and decorates cakes and she always leaves her hair down and never wears gloves. She'll set candy and mix-ins on the bare counter which who knows how long it's been since it was wiped off last. It's gross. Don't go to Colston. Movie theater. The big bucket of popcorn has the same amount of popcorn as the biggest bag which is a few dollars cheaper. Not exactly an evil scam but still is good to know. Most likely depends on the theater. But good to think about just in case. I used to work at an Applebee's as a busboy, one of many food service jobs. Many of these might only be true for our particular store, whatever. Everyone in the back was either Mexican or black, and they were more like microwave jockeys than cooks. They cooked steaks and fried things on the flat grill but really most vegetables came in little plastic bags. Nuke the bag for x seconds, dump on the plate and serve. One guy lost his job because he'd have his girlfriend call in to go orders, then never pick them up. The guys in the kitchen loved the free food, but eventually he bragged too loudly and got fired for about 6 months of fake orders. Most of our managers were pretty cool, but one in particular was a true scumbag. He wasn't allowed to do any hiring because he'd only hire hot girls and he'd try to trade sex for guaranteed job placement. A few times he tried cornering some waitresses in the walk-in freezer. But there were two black guys in the kitchen crew that were stand-up homies and kept making up excuses to get crap from the freezer any time he tried. There were two skanky B who got him fired when they found out that their special BJ for favors deal was applying to the other as well. All the other managers were cool, but he always made for interesting stories. When I had free time, I would spend almost all of it in back practicing my Spanish with the Mexicans in back. Spoiler. Your waitress and just walked in back 90% of what they're talking about is how hot you are aren't and what they'd do to you if they could. I learned words and phrases that would make a sailor cringe. One guy in particular, Papi, he was a 50 something old guy, cool as heck and always helpful when I messed up my Spanish. He worked every day, every, freaking, day. He had one day off in the 3 plus years I worked there, and halfway through his day off he stopped by to see how things were going. He lived in his beat up van and I'm pretty sure he ate mostly sent back food. Poor guy. He was awesome. Though, once I figured out how to speak decent Spanish we'd talk about philosophical crap like the meaning of life and what life was like in Mexico. One day I discovered that busboys got tip share. Keep in mind, this was my first food service job. I was a stupid high school kid. The reason why was because the managers kept all the tip share in envelopes for each employee, and mine was overflowing the envelope and could I please come get it. It's starting to take up room in the safe. I had something around $250 if I recall. I wadded up the whole thing and tucked it under Papi's windshield wiper. Never told the Papi story to anybody before. Internet. Keep my secret. 
former Pizza Hut manager here. Never order a cheese lover's pizza without toppings. It has the exact same amount of cheese as a normal cheese pizza. A cheese lover's pizza with toppings has the same amount of cheese as an extra cheese pizza with toppings. Ask for fresh breadsticks. Some stores will keep them in the warmer for hours and they turn to crap pretty fast. If something isn't right, call back and complain. Always. It's Pizza Hut policy to always satisfy the customer, even if they know the complaint is ridiculous. So if you get the wrong toppings, or if it's not cooked all the way, tell them. You'll either get a new pizza or a credit for next time. You won't get a refund because that looks bad on paper for the store. And please be nice to your order taker unless they're rude to you first. If the customer was nice I would go out of my way to find specials that work with what they ordered. There's a list of unadvertised specials that we had access to. TLDR of entire comment section. Any place can be clean or disgusting, depending entirely on its employees and management. I hope they don't serve real butter. They don't even have any available upon request. It's a margarine butter blend. It's crazy to me that a restaurant that specializes in pancakes serves that crap. Just because you're by the ocean, doesn't mean the seafood you're being served is any fresher. It's all the same size coas foods whatever crap no matter where you go. McDonald's varies widely by restaurant. Worked in one at 15 that was by the book. Fast. Clean. Worked at one at 16 that the manager was so cheap she wouldn't throw out old food ever and we were always understaffed and it was super slow. I worked at Starbucks for a while. Overall. Everything was really clean and fresh. I got to take home expired foods at the end of the night because they had really strict expiration rules. And expired food wouldn't really expire for another few days. But here's a tip. If you're ever a dong at Starbucks, you will get decaffed or sugar freed or non-fatted. I always felt like an evil monster mind when someone ordered their quad venti 7 pump mocha because I would deca full 4 shots and only give them the recommended amount of pumps. Muahaha. You decafing son of a gun. I like it. Soil and green. It's actually not totally made of people. Only one part people. Three parts egg whites and people flavoring. And, apparently, two three bags mayo. I used to work at a speedway when they started making a lot of their own kinds of food. Sandwiches. Pizzas. Things like that. Stuff we'd put in an oven and assemble. Dirty secret. We rarely made sure the times were right. So people ate a lot of old sandwiches. No one ever seemed to notice. They weren't good quality. So getting a little soggy or whatever didn't affect it much. Oh. And I swear. During breakfast times. I ate more bacon than I put on the sandwiches. That at least was delicious. MMMM. Former Starbucks barista here. No horror stories. But I always find a way to exploit any retail pose when I'm bored. There are multiple ways to charge for the exact same drink, oftentimes much cheaper than the menu price. X. An iced venti latte is dollar sign for. A doppio, two espresso shots, is one dollar and ninety five cents. And a cup of ice with two add shots is one dollar and twenty cents. Because you can add as much cold milk as you want from the condiment bar, that island full of sugar packets and carafes, to whatever you're drinking, you can always ask for an iced venti doppio. Pay $1.95 then add the milk yourself. Half price lattes. The cup of ice was something I'd do for the regulars. Don't expect to talk your way into getting that. Also, at least at my store. Free drinks for uniform officers, firemen, and military. I also gave away drinks to teachers because frick you that's why. Domino's Pizza Dirty Secret? We honestly had very little bad things at my store. The worst thing that happened was lazy drivers not washing dishes properly at the end of the night. Which didn't go on for very long. Noodles and company's deep dark secret. I can't even think of anything. Veggies are cut fresh twice a day. More if we're busy. Noodles are cooked fresh once or twice a day and kept in a lidded cooler until ready for use. Sauce veggie noodle cooler temps are checked 2-3 times a day. Entire restaurant is broken down and cleaned at close every night. We cut fruit fresh for salads because we don't sell enough for it to not turn brown. I know, it's a scary place. 
I worked at Domino's and Papa John's, and Sam's for those in the know, for years in my teens and early 20s. Mostly pretty above board, sanitation wise. There's a definite 3 5 second rule, but the floors are kept very clean and no piece of dirt is going to make it through that oven. Fully 95% of the people I ever worked with at all of those places was baked constantly. But if you don't want people that are stoned making your food, you're gonna have to cut down on your food sources drastically. There was also rampant drug use and distribution from the highest level. In one store specifically, that I won't mention. It was pretty spectacular though. Very organized. Weight kept in ceiling. Smaller amounts stored in drivers locked cash boxes on the wall. The relevant orders were transferred to someone complicit in the operation. All of the managers. GM. Two asked. Shift. Two of the drivers. And one of the insiders. Who would take a normal order and upon completion. Go unlock an appropriately stuffed cubby hole. And remove X amount of reefers LSD fungus occasional WE. And either hand it to someone who is boxing pizzas that knows what's going on. Or take over themselves. Depending on what the food narcotic was it would either be placed in the box with the real food. Or just put in an extra chicken tenders box. The food is then stuck inside a heat bag and put under a lamp. Usually already assigned to one of the two special drivers. Or if it's to be picked up. Mark do not touch and left in the bag for purposes of identification and to avoid someone opening it innocently and becoming enlightened. Person pays plus extra. Whoever was involved gets an appropriate amount of dollar sign later that night. It was beautiful. TL. Dr. Cool story about a whole major pizza chain store selling drugs out of pizza boxes. Half the time when you order DQ blizzards with extra stuff, you won't get it. Also, if you order a blizzard that isn't a basic flavor, Oreo, Reese, Butterfinger, such as, Chocoholic, Strawberry Cheese Quake, Turtle Pecan, Brownie Batter, the ingredients were more than likely grabbed in a handful by a bare hand that hadn't been washed in a while. I worked there a year and a half and never wore gloves was never encouraged to wash my hands. The big wall in front of Treat Center is there for a reason. DQ employee currently of 2 years. I've honestly never heard of this at my location, but I've been to other locations that are crap storms. I guess each one is different. This will get buried, but maybe some will read it. I worked at a Quiznos right when they started doing the $5 large sub deal, which was meant to compete with Subway. Right when we lowered the prices, we got instructions from corporate to start using less meat on the sandwiches. A large used to have 6 ounces of meat. After the promotion started we were supposed to put 5 ounces of meat on the largers. Not really a huge scandal, but I thought it was a pretty cheap way to cut corners and mislead people. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.